Once we have aligned the W axis to the first feature of interest, we're going to go ahead and remeasure that feature to establish a new starting point to go ahead and calculate the angle between the two features. Once we have measured that, we're going to right click, move to, absolute the nominal value to where the other feature should be. After we have moved to that rotation, we're going to go ahead and measure the overall outside of the part, and this will help to get us a new established origin to help account for any run out in the rotation. We're going to want to make sure that the uh, part in question is in focus. We're going to go ahead and use a line on the left hand side of the part first to go ahead and give us again a new frame of reference as to where the overall part is, again to account for any run out. We're going to go ahead and measure another line on the other side of the feature of interest on the overall part and this way again we can set up a new origin to account for run out. Use right click move here to get this done a little faster. Now that we have both sides measured we're going to go ahead and create that as a gap. From, from the gap we will go ahead and create a new system and skew to the gap along with re-origin our x-axis to that gap. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the x equals zero where theoretically our feature of interest should be. Let's go ahead and turn on some lighting so that way we can find that feature of interest. Again using the automatic auto lights which will get us a good recommended. Then we're going to go ahead and measure the circle now using the F-scan circle. Once we have that circle measured, we're going to go ahead and call up a calculator feature in which we're going to subtract the nominal rotation of 120 degrees by the overall arc length of the offset of the circle from the nominal X using arc sine, the X actual position divided by the gap width over 2. And again, this will give us our overall angular position of 119.968.